You would think, just based on the name alone, that if your blood work shows a positive rheumatoid factor, you would most likely have rheumatoid arthritis, right? But this is rheumatology. Of course, it's not that simple. The rheumatoid factor blood test is one of many we look for when deciding if someone has rheumatoid arthritis. We can't hang our hat just on the rheumatoid factor because it's notoriously misleading. But here you are, stuck in between doctor's visits, staring at a bolded lab result, waiting for that initial rheumatology appointment. How can you tell if this is something to worry about? That's what we're gonna talk about today. What the rheumatoid factor means, how you can tell if it means rheumatoid arthritis, and how to get yourself organized to have the best rheumatology consultation. So let's get started. So before getting into whether it means you have RA or not, let's first talk about what even is the rheumatoid factor. The rheumatoid factor is an autoantibody. An antibody is simply a protein our immune system makes that is used to fight off foreign material. We make antibodies against bacteria, viruses, and even our food. Anything that our body identifies as not us. We also produce autoantibodies. These are antibodies that don't recognize foreign material to fight, but recognize our own tissues to fight against ourselves. Our immune system is constantly making autoantibodies, which is actually quite normal. And because of this, our immune system also has its own regulatory system, its own way of finding these autoantibodies and getting rid of them so we don't cause harm to our own tissues. When this regulatory system isn't working at 100%, autoantibodies and other elements of autoimmunity are allowed to perpetuate and this can then lead to actual autoimmune disease. It's important to understand that autoantibodies generally have not been considered to cause the disease. We've described them as markers of possible disease, and in fact, I've described them as such on this channel. But even that is a bit of an oversimplification because the reality is that it appears in some people the autoantibodies may be related to the development of disease, and in some people they're not. This is maddening, I know. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? But this framework allows us to understand the very real phenomenon we see, which is those with confirmed autoimmune disease are generally doing better when their autoantibodies are low or negative. Those without autoimmune disease can have positive autoantibodies and never develop anything. So with that out of the way, what are the signs that your rheumatoid factor may mean you have rheumatoid arthritis? Both of your hands and wrists hurt and get swollen, and this has been going on for at least three months. Now, not all hand pain is rheumatoid arthritis. In fact, most hand pain isn't. Our hands are a complex structure of multiple tendons, ligaments, and nerves, and we can get tendonitis, carpal tunnel, and osteoarthritis in our hand. All of these can also be associated with swelling, which makes things even more confusing. Having wrist and big knuckle pain and swelling specifically can be a sign. And in rheumatoid arthritis, these areas may even feel warm to touch. You have multiple joints aside from your hands that hurt and are swollen. Rheumatoid arthritis can affect almost any joint in the body except the low back. Low back pain is usually not RA but elbows, shoulders, knees, ankles, feet, and even hips can be impacted. Again, what are we looking for? Is the joint warm to touch? Is it both joints, meaning both elbows, both knees, etc.? And here's a little hint. In rheumatoid arthritis, things tend to be symmetrical. You have positive blood work, like a positive CCP antibody, elevated inflammatory markers, or other more subtle signs of inflammation, like anemia or low vitamin D. The rheumatoid factor is never considered in isolation, and along with your symptoms, the rheumatologist is going to check a whole bunch of other labs. What we are looking for are general signs of inflammation and more specific antibodies for rheumatoid arthritis. So what am I talking about? What are these labs? So for inflammation, we look at two markers that tend to go up with inflammation. So the sedimentation rate or sed rate, also known as the ESR, and the C-reactive protein or CRP. We'll also take note if there are other more subtle signs of inflammation like anemia or low vitamin D. It's very important to remember that none of these blood test results are by themselves specific for rheumatoid arthritis, but are data points that we'll use. The CCP antibody is a much more specific antibody for rheumatoid arthritis, and if this is positive with the rheumatoid factor, then the chances are high you'll be diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Most of the time, a rheumatoid factor is checked when we're feeling like crud, and it coming 
feedback positive can actually be an indication of something other than rheumatoid arthritis. We can see a positive rheumatoid factor with infections, other autoimmune conditions, and even more serious conditions like cancer. Now, this is not to scare you, just to help you understand that when you walk into any doctor's office with a positive rheumatoid factor, their thinking is actually quite broad. They aren't just going to ask you about your joints, or they shouldn't just be asking you about your joints. Viral infections are notorious for causing a positive rheumatoid factor. And if I see someone who was sick any time near the blood draw, I'll wanna repeat it once more time has passed. Also, other autoimmune conditions like lupus will often have a positive rheumatoid factor. Now, does that mean they also have rheumatoid arthritis? Not usually, although sometimes, but that's for another video. So what are some signs it could mean something else? Well, that's tough, because really the symptoms are so broad. Instead of listing the thousands of possible symptoms just to freak you out, it's more about what symptoms you don't have. If if you have a positive rheumatoid factor and don't have a lot of joint pain, or perhaps the joint pain you have is mild compared to some of the other symptoms you have, then that's something your doctor is going to want to dig into. You can probably tell by now that figuring out if a positive rheumatoid factor means anything is art and science. Anytime you see a new doctor for arthritis or a possible autoimmune condition, your doctor will ask you pointed questions and probably run a slew of tests. But I want more for you. I want you to walk out of your appointment feeling confident in the conversation and plan you and your doc develop. And since I can't be everyone's doctor and I can't make sure your doctor is well rested, well fed, relaxed, and in a good mood when you see them, what I can do is help you get organized and as prepared as possible to have the best appointment ever. Enter your appointment home run handbook, your absolutely free handbook that I've developed to help you tell your story in a way that will get you answers. If you've spent any time on this channel, you will have heard me say over and over again how important how you are feeling is when determining your diagnosis or what treatment to choose. But it's actually not always that easy to convey to our doctors how we are feeling in a way that will help them help us. That's where this comes in. It walks you through various different thought exercises where you can begin to organize your symptoms, your experiences, and your family history so you are prepared to tell the doctor your story so they can then put the pieces together. I have a general version as well as a special rheumatoid arthritis edition, which has everything in the original version plus some extra information and thought exercises specific to rheumatoid arthritis. The link will be down in the description box below. And did I mention it was free? Okay. Back to rheumatoid factor. There's one more possibility, and that is it doesn't mean anything. Remember how I said that in some people, autoantibodies don't lead to anything? Well, that definitely happens with the rheumatoid factor. The chance of having a false positive rheumatoid factor, which is just a scientific way of saying a positive rheumatoid factor that doesn't mean anything, that risk goes up as we get older. Why? Well, like everything else, our immune system ages and doesn't work at peak levels as we get older. That means that our regulatory system can falter and doesn't catch every autoantibody that's produced. So how do you know if this is you? If you are older than 65 years old, your dog will want to be extra careful when diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis. Now, why is this so tricky? Well, the chance of having osteoarthritis in our hands goes up as we get older, so it's very common to have some hand pain and stiffness and even notice our fingers bending or changing. You add on top of that a positive rheumatoid factor and you would think a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is a no-brainer, but it's not. The doc needs to pay extra attention to which knuckles of the fingers are the problem in all of your blood work. Your rheumatoid factor result is considered low positive. Like all other autoantibody results, the rheumatoid factor isn't simply a positive or negative, but is reported as a number. And although every rheumatologist has certainly seen low positive results in someone with very hot and swollen joints and vice versa, in general, if your result is only slightly positive, we consider that a good sign. Getting any positive autoantibody result back from the lab is never fun. We don't usually get them done when we're feeling great and the anxiety and stress and figuring out what this result means can really drive us insane. The rheumatoid factor test is even more confusing because of that name. If you have been feeling sick, 
have joint pain, and find yourself facing a positive rheumatoid factor, then you absolutely deserve a thorough rheumatology consultation. Getting the right diagnosis the first time out is dependent on a number of factors, one of which is your level of preparedness and ability to partner with your doctor as y'all dive in and figure things out. If you need any help organizing your symptoms or telling your story in a way your doctor can use to get you answers, check out the Appointment Home Run Handbook. I really think it'll help. Also, we covered a bunch of topics around rheumatoid arthritis. I'm going to put some relevant rheumatoid arthritis video links in the description box below. And I encourage you to check out the RA playlist. All right, subscribe, like, and share if you like this. Thank you so much for staying until the end. I hope you got something out of it, and we'll see you next time.